All right, let's sing this out. I'll raise a hallelujah. And I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on. I'll raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, I'll raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. Come on, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery, I raise a hallelujah, and fear you lost your hold on me. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. King is alive. All right, guys. So everyone here at home, whether you're in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, you're going to repeat after me. If you're lost, just follow whatever Laura does. Come on. And sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. Sing a little louder, sing a little louder, oh sing a little louder, oh sing a little louder. Come on, let's go. We're going to sing a little louder, in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder.
God, that you've given us another day to glorify you, another day to love on people and love on you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you would lead us, that you would direct us, and that you would guide us. And I thank you, Father God, that we would seek you first among all things, Lord Jesus, that we would always put you first in our lives. We thank you, Father God, for this service, and we thank you, Father God, for this day, and we thank you, Father God, that the people that have gathered together to glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. You guys enjoy the rest of the service. Akuo, so great to be with you again today. Y'all, we just finished our first series of the year a couple weeks ago, and in that series, we have been diving into the word that God gave us for 2023, and that word is ready. Y'all, this is what we are supposed to be walking with in our minds this year. And the funny thing about that word is that when you start hearing about ready, some people will start thinking like, oh, well, this is like, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be getting ready. Or I'm like at some point going to be prepared for this thing and I'll be ready later. But that's wrong. That's the wrong thing because this word that God gave us isn't about getting ready someday. It's that you're ready right now. And you are ready to live out the purpose that God has created for you. You're ready for it right now. And the way that we can do that, the way that we can step into that purpose and live out this ready is by living out the four L's here at Akuo. They're the four things that we know that God has called all of us to do. They are listen to God, love people, learn our purpose, and link to our community. And I know that you are all ready to live your life in a way that reflects God through these four L's. And there are a few things that connect to this better than others. One of the things that connects to it like just perfectly and what we've been talking about in listening to God is roller coasters. Yeah, these are truly one of my favorite things. I love a good roller coaster, even a bad roller coaster. I'll get on it at least once, right? Just to try it out. I like the ability that it gives me to go like super fast and do loops and spins and all the things that you get to do. I've yet to meet a roller coaster that I don't want to try out. Now, most recently, I got a chance to go to Fiesta, Texas, and I went on probably the most insane roller coaster I've ever been on. It was called Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger. Now, what makes it so crazy is the first drop, you know, normally this is a place where a roller coaster can like make or break how awesome it is. This one does not disappoint. It drops at a 95 degree angle. For those of you that aren't math people, 90 degrees is straight up and down. So like 95 is like this. So you're basically doing a free fall and you kind of like, you go down, but then come back a little bit. So like it's negative G's, it's, it's weird and crazy and messed up my brain. Then you'd like do a few loops, you hit another drop where it feels like you're gonna fly right out of the car. You do a couple of circles and then you're done. I happened to be like wearing my, my heart and my heart rate app was on during that time and my heart rate jumped up to 178 beats per minute while I was on that ride. I'd never been on, on anything like that before. It was absolutely insane. Now here's the thing about roller coasters. I didn't start with Dr. Diabolical. I started small, like when I was four or five years old. I wasn't thinking about a roller coaster like that. And I started where I'm sure a lot of you that are from San Antonio started, the Little Dipper at Kitty Park. Now, this moves at a much more tolerable speed for a small child because as a fully grown and mostly mature adult, that Dr. Diabolical coaster was something I could barely handle, right? Like 178 beats a minute, not great. So it'd be crazy for me to think that like a four or five year old could handle that. You see, it took me years and years of me working my way up roller coasters of different sizes, styles, and speeds to be ready for that crazy ride which is something that happens with us in all of our lives. In school, you start small. 
you have to learn how to count before you can do advanced calculus. At home, you start small. You clean your room before you're sent outside with the lawnmower to go cut the grass. Even at work, you start small, right? Like you start off in what's called an entry-level job. And then eventually you're given more and more responsibility as you work your way up into a management position. And one thing I think that we miss is that the same thing can actually happen in our spiritual lives, even when it comes to listening to God. Sometimes we have to start small. We got to start with the little dipper. We can't go on Dr. Diabolical spiritually, right? Like we got to start small. And we actually see this happening biblically. Jesus actually talks about this exact idea of starting small. He understood that before you get on the giant roller coaster, you got to start with the little dipper. So let's take a look at what he had to say about listening. He said, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. This is exactly what we're talking about today. When we can listen in the small things, that can lead to much, much bigger things. That can lead to a better understanding of God's voice in our lives. That's something that I think we all want. Y'all, I know that I get up here and regularly talk about how God has been speaking to me in my life and, and will help me lead, like help lead me in my life and lead y'all as a part of this church. But I got to tell you, it didn't start like that. It didn't start with like a church, go plant a church or go knock on a door. It started way before that, a long time ago. Remember, I told you all about this last week. I was a kid laying in bed, asking God to make a sound in the house to prove to me that he was real. It was the first time I realized that there was this God that was willing to communicate with me. From then on, I was able to listen better. And all of those years later, it led to a kuo. And what's even more amazing is that our name speaks directly to this idea of starting small. This idea is literally baked into the definition of our name. So let's take a look at the Greek word akuo. It says to hear God's voice, which prompts him to birth faith within. So literally, akuo means listen, but that's just a literal sense. The way the word was used back then, you can see that definition right there. I just read it to you. To hear God's voice, which prompts God to birth faith within. It's about hearing God's voice. And then when we can hear God's voice, God will give us more faith within us. It's this amazing thing where he's like on both sides of the equation. He's giving us words to hear and then giving us more faith. When we listen to God, he gives us more faith. When we listen to God, he give us, gives us a better understanding of what he wants from us, of who he is. Does that look familiar? That's a lot like what Jesus was talking about, right? And I believe with my whole heart that when you do that, you can listen. Because when we start to listen to God, I think he, he also starts small. I think he starts with a whisper. And I think it's for good reason too. Author and pastor Mark Batterson explains why he thinks God speaks in a whisper at the beginning and then works his way up. Here's what he said in his book. He said, when someone speaks in a whisper, you have to get very close to hear. In fact, you have to put your ear near the person's mouth. We lean toward a whisper, and that's what God wants. The goal of hearing the Heavenly Father's voice isn't just hearing his voice, it's intimacy with him. That's why he speaks in a whisper. He wants to be as close as is divinely possible. So to get us started, I think God's going to whisper. I'm not sure you'll get an audible voice. For me to this day, I feel like I've only heard an audible voice in my ear maybe once, and it wasn't even a word, it was just a sound. I'm, and that's a whole different story for another day, but here's the point. When I talk about hearing from God, normally it's just an understanding like in my spirit. It's an understanding that this is the right way to move. Sometimes it's just a thought that comes out of nowhere. Like I'll be working in the yard, you know, cutting the grass, gotta keep lines straight, and then all of a sudden this thought hits me out of nowhere. 
about someone I'm supposed to be praying for, or I'll get a thought about a new thing that we need to start doing here to Kuo. It'll be something like that. Very rarely, like I said, almost never is it like I hear somebody talking to me. Now, you might be lucky enough to get the audible voice. I pray you do. But I think everyone will at least get a whisper, a chance to move closer to God, to hear him. Because when you get closer to him, to hear better, you will have your faith grown in him. So one day he doesn't have to whisper to you in your ear. It doesn't have to ha happen at that level of intimacy. Instead, he can call out to you while you're in the middle of a crowded room. And I want you to get there. I want you to start hearing from God. I want him to grow more faith in you. I want you to be able to hear better from him after that. So I wanna lead you in what I think are the two most important things when it comes to listening to God. The first one is attitude. And I think we can see that at work in the Jewish scripture story of the prophet Samuel. You see, his story actually starts before he was even conceived. Samuel's mother, Hannah, was unable to have children. So one day, she's in the temple, and she prays this to God. She says, O oh Lord of heaven's armies, if you look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime, and as a sign that he will be dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. Now that's a prayer, y'all. Now, when Hannah says she's going to give Samuel away, what she means is that Samuel, when he's weaned, which is thought to be around three years old, she's going to hand him over to the priests to live with them, the ones that are in charge of the temple in Israel. So at that age, Hannah actually ends up taking Samuel to Eli and the rest of the priests. And while there, Samuel becomes a Levite. And one of the signs of the Levite is that they never cut their hair in dedication to the Lord. So he was able to live that out. Now, while there, Samuel was brought up in all the ways of God and is doing a great job serving. The scripture says that Samuel grew in stature among men and God. And everything would actually change for Samuel one night. While he is dead asleep, something happens. Here's what is written in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel! Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? Then he got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he'd never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called him a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. Okay, here's the first part. For us to hear from God, we got to start small. Samuel, someone that would become a prophet, someone that would hear from God all the time for the entire nation of Israel, he started with a voice in the middle of the night. But not only that, the way Samuel approached God was in a small way, with the right attitude. Eli tells Samuel the correct way to approach God in this, which is with humility. Samuel is to speak to the Lord in a way that shows reverence and respect. He's supposed to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Can you imagine what you would do if someone spoke to you like that? I mean, I think I would faint if like I asked my kid, I called my kids over and that's what they told me. I'd be like, who are you? And then boom, knocked out, right? But that's because like we're all people, right? Like we're, we're on the same level. But when we start to speak to God, it's good for us to start small. We recognize that he's big and we're small. That is the best way that you can get started with God. By acknowledging we're here, he's there. So when we go to God to start listening, one of the best ways that we can communicate with him is to just ask him what he wants to talk about. 
why don't you just tell me what you would like to talk about today? Or it's kind of like, you know, when you see somebody, you go, hey, how, how was your day? You know, it's something that'll cover everything. And then you just sit back and wait for them to tell you how their day was. With God, it's like, what do you want to tell me? Okay, so that's the first half of what we should be doing. We will see the second thing we need to do when listening to God here, also in the story of Samuel. Let's see what happens immediately next, the next time God calls out to him. And the Lord called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. So here's the second part of what we need to do. We have to be available. We need the right attitude and we need to be available. When Samuel does both of these things, he is turned into a full-blown prophet that can actually hear what God has to say. Because it's right after this that he gets his first message from God, something he would have to share with his boss, Eli. And the amazing thing to see is that he is created in this moment for something greater. Something new is created for Samuel. What he learned is that if he opens himself to God, if Samuel stopped and listened to God, if he approached God with the right attitude and then made himself available to hear, then God would actually speak to him. Akuo, we are all capable of that. We can make this happen. We can approach God with the right attitude. We're here, he's there. And then once we do that, we can make ourselves available to listen. And then after that, we can engage in something that could be miraculous to someone, something that could change the outlook of someone else's life, something that could change someone else's eternity. And for some of you hearing my voice right now, you feel like you need to get in on all, all of these things that we're talking about. You were like clicking around the internet and somehow, some way you ended up here. And if that's you, thank you for listening to me today. I appreciate your interest in what we're talking about. I appreciate your ability to hear me out, to give me a chance. You've got a chance. And your next step in your journey of exploring who Jesus is might be talking with him. We'd call that a prayer. I mean, you might start like me as a little kid. If you're at this point, you could just ask God something like, God, Jesus, could you show me you are real in a way that only I will understand? That might be the very first step that you take today. But for some of you, you have learned that he is real. You can't go back, you can't turn around. But you don't know where to go now to continue on your journey. Well, I would say you could also have a conversation with Jesus today too, which is super important. Because once you do that, once you have that conversation with Jesus and you let him know that you believe in him, you could have the Holy Spirit living within you. You get a piece of God walking and leading you at all times. You then become the intersection between heaven and earth. You get the chance to bring heaven to earth through your belief in Jesus. Now to do that, all you have to do is just confirm your belief in him. And if while you were listening today, you decided that you want all that, then I can help you get it. I can help lead you in that conversation or prayer that you can share with Jesus. In that conversation, all you have to do is just simply confirm your trust and faith in Jesus and what he did while he was here on this earth. That he was the Son of God, is still the Son of God, the perfect lamb that was sacrificed for you for all the wrong things that you've done in your life to make you right with God. And to kind of help you out in this time right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the rest of the Akuo community to pray along with you while you're having this conversation with Jesus. Because here at Akuo Church, no one ever has to pray alone. You always have a community there with you. We aren't gonna leave you when things get tough. So if you wanna confirm your belief in Jesus, just go ahead and say this between you and him. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you and what you did here on this earth. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. Now for the rest of us believers, whether you've believed in Jesus for the last five seconds or the last five decades, 
I also want to lead you in something. Y'all, we're a kuo, which means we're all about listening to God, and I want to do that right now. And really, I want to do it in the way that we talked about today. I want us to approach God with the right attitude and then make ourselves available to Him. Because as I've been saying all year long, sometimes the best ability that we can have is availability. And then we can just sit back and wait on Him. Now, I want you to know that it's, it's okay if when we do this, you don't hear from Him. It's still good to sit in the silence and just spend a minute with Him. Give Him this availability. Make yourself humble. Have the right attitude and go to Him. It's okay if you get distracted in these moments. Just do your best to go back. Do your best in this. You don't have to be perfect. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. We're gonna speak one sentence to, to Jesus and then we're gonna wait. So just between you and Jesus, you don't even have to say this out loud. You can just pray this just silently to him. Just say, Jesus, I am your servant. Please speak to me whatever you want. And I'll come back to finish out the prayer. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for sacrificing your life for us. Jesus, please help us tune in on your voice. Please help us hear your whispers. Help us feel your closeness with us. Jesus, help us have the right attitude with you. Help us be available to you as much as possible. Thank you for everything, Jesus. We love you. And we pray all these things in your holy and mighty and wonderful name. Amen. All right, thank you so much for being a part of this today. Before we go, there are a few things that I would like to share with you. The first thing I wanna talk about are our community groups. They kicked off a few weeks back, and if you aren't a part of one, we want you to join one today. And if you're interested in being a part of a group here at Akuo, it's really easy to find one. All you have to do is go to akuo.church community, and you can find the one that fits you in the best way possible. And if for some reason we don't have that one, let us know, and we'll do our best to get one going for you. And I say this all the time, the best thing that you might do here at Akuo is joining one of these community groups. Now, speaking of community, we are teaming up with this mega national campaign to grow community here in the area. Recently, an ad campaign started called He Gets Us has been playing in TV ads all over the place. 
And I feel like I've been seeing them during the NFL playoffs this year. And if you're watching this before Super Bowl, they're gonna buy three minutes of ads during the Super Bowl today. And the whole thing is about how Jesus was a real person and how the world reacted to him. And really contextualizing that to today, it's really a pushback on the Christians that sit on their high horses and act like they're better than everybody else. When in essence, Jesus was low compared to the rest of society back then. So what happens is you can go to the He Gets Us website and people can go on and ask for prayer. So we got connected with this website and we're one of the churches that will receive these prayers from these people from all around our area. And what I've quickly realized is that uh, I can't do this alone because we got signed up and we had all kinds of people this week already. So I'm actually asking y'all if you're interested in being a part of this team to help respond to prayers of people all around our area, email me at humby.cedvera at akuo.church and we can get you started. Now y'all, we serve a God that wants us to be generous with his church and we thank you for showing that. When it comes to giving here at Akuo, I'm so grateful for what you guys do and I'm not worried about the amount or the percentage. I just want you to go and ask God about it before you do give. I want you to ask him how much you should be giving and that, that little voice, that random thought, that, that uh, um, prompting in the spirit, that thing that you just know is the right thing, that's the amount that you should be giving. That's what you should be doing. Now, if you aren't sure where to start, you haven't heard from the Lord in this yet, it's okay. One of the many ways that you can express your generosity here at Akuo is through the biblical method of generosity called tithing, which means, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. That would be a great place for you to get started, but we don't want this to be a burden for you. We want you to do this as a celebration of the relationship that you have with Jesus. We aren't creating new laws. We aren't heaping guilt on you. This is a thing where you give something, and this isn't a thing where you give something and like, God gives you something back. It's not transactional. This is about doing this to celebrate all the things that you have received through your relationship with Jesus. And it's just, you know, what we continue to talk about earlier, we wanna make sure that we are putting God first. We wanna make sure that we are humbling ourselves before him. We wanna make sure that we are making ourselves available to him. Now, we want it to be a celebration for you as well. And this celebration might not be a possibility for you right now. Things might be really tough for you and your family, and we get that, that's okay. And if things are tough for you right now, please let us know so we can help you out. We wanna be linked to you during your tough time. So if you need anything at all, please reach out to us. Or if you know someone that needs help, let us know. To do that, all you have to do is go to our website, akuo.church, and click on the Contact Us link. You can also send an email to us at help at akuo.church, or you can call or text the church at 210-901-8785. And if you are willing to give here at Akuo Church, the way that you can do that is by going to our website, akuo.church. Now, when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. We also have our text to give option. For that, all you have to do is text Akuo and the dollar amount you wanna to give to the number 77977. Now, if you don't feel comfortable giving electronically, we totally understand that. We also have our PO box available if you would like to send your gift through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail it to Akuo at P.O. Box 100-125, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. All right, y'all, that's all that I have for you today. I just want you to know that I love and appreciate all of you. And I'll be praying for you now, all week long. The Akuo team will be praying for you all throughout the week. And we're just so excited for you to be a part of this community. Now, before you go, let me just pray over you one last time, all right? So, uh, Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for the way that you are showing us how to listen to you. I thank you for the whispers that you are regularly giving us. I pray that as each person puts away their phone, uh, turns off their TV, uh, closes up their, their tablet, I pray that you would be prompting them in the right things. I pray that you would be whispering to them all the time and I pray that your whisper would be recognized. I pray that each and every person here would be able to move in the way that you are prompting them to go. And I pray that through that, you would give them more faith in you than they've ever had before. I pray that through that, they'd be able to recognize your voice better than they ever have before. So the next time you whisper to them, they would be able to hear it and move the first time. We thank you for everything, Jesus. We love you. 
And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right, that's all that we have for you. We'll see you at a community group this week.